Hello and welcome to evening prayer on this Friday of the 33rd week of Ordinary Time. Uh, we approach our last weekend uh, of Ordinary Time before we enter into the Advent season on the following weekend. Uh, so again, today we're, well, let me get this out of the way first. Today we celebrate two concurrent feast days. Uh, the feast day of the dedication of the Basilicas of Saints Peter and Paul. Now these are two separate basilicas in Rome. Uh, the original St. Peter's Basilica was erected over his tomb uh, by Constantine in the 300s, 330 thereabouts. Of course that structure was destroyed through the years and it's always been replaced. We have the present day glorious, beautiful St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Uh, also uh, in the 380s, uh, the emperor of uh, Rome, the Roman emperor, emperor built a basilica to St. Paul, the apostle. And it's about, oh, two or three miles maybe from uh, St. Peter's in Rome and subsequently through history uh, this building was also uh, destroyed a couple of times uh, by fires and and wars and the like and but it's always been replaced and today there there's two beautiful uh, basilicas and in the 1800s Pope Pius IX in one solemn occasion dedicated both of these structures uh, simultaneously. Uh, so today we celebrate that uh, these two churches in Rome, St. Peter and St. Paul, uh, the dedication of both of these churches uh, took place uh, at the same time, the same time in history uh, in the 1800s by Pope Pius IX. Also, the other feast day today is, um, let me get her name right. It's a French sounding name, so I want to make sure I do it right. St. Rose Philippine Duchesne uh, from France and a, uh, entered the novitiate, a group of nuns there at the age of 17. And uh, they, uh, they were dedicated to education. And then uh, in the 18, my goodness, when was it? 18, eighteen eighteen, she and four other nuns came over from France to expand their uh, order and to make it international and they built a school and settled in an area just outside of St. Louis, Missouri. I believe it's St. Joseph, Missouri. And they, uh, they built a school and, and educated the native uh, people of that time, uh, one of the Indian tribes that were uh, uh, brought into Christianity and taught and, and uh, cared for by the good sisters there. And so uh, St. Rose uh, was, uh, they were credited with building the very first uh, educational facility on the west side of the Mississippi River. So it uh, goes back a long way and uh, early on in this country's growth, but it was nice that uh, these good nuns came over and brought the faith to uh, the people of the Midwest United States of America. So today we have these two uh, feast days, the dedication of the two basilicas, Peter and Paul in Rome, and also St. Rose Philippine Duchesne. Uh, and uh, we thank her for uh, all the effort that she put forward in spreading Christianity here in the United States. 
our readings for today, our first reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 10. Uh, John is instructed to uh, receive a scroll from an angel, and the angel tells him as he's receiving it to eat it. And he said it will be sweet as sweeter than honey on your tongue, but it will turn your stomach sour. And so he did take the scroll, he did eat it, and true enough, the taste in his mouth was sweet, very beautiful, but his stomach did turn sour uh, from it. And then he's told he needed to go and evangelize, to preach the good news again. And this, uh, but not the first time in Scripture, uh, one of the prophets, I believe, Ezekiel, also was told to eat a, a scroll from, from heaven. And the same thing, it was sweet on the tongue, but sour in the stomach. It sort of represents our life and our life as Christians and in, as in our, uh, in our world today, in, in no matter what time, Old Testament, New Testament, modern day, um, we receive God's word. And it, we have to always remember how sweet and beautiful God's word is. Then sometimes we, we get caught up in, in the world and there's struggles and then there's, there's struggle and there's suffering and there's the sourness that we encounter on account of our, our Christianity, on account of our zeal for our faith. Uh, life gets difficult, but it's what we always have to remember. The important part of this is that we recall the sweetness that we have in in our faith and the, the promise of God for eternal sweetness, eternal life, eternal glory in heaven and put up with the the discomforts and the sourness, the the struggles that we have, put up with that and remember always the sweetness of God's word and how that sweetness is also an everlasting sweetness so that we can overcome our struggles and savor and look forward to the sweetness of eternal honey from God. Our gospel today, we see the zeal of Jesus in his temple, clearing out, chasing out the the money lenders. Jesus says that my my house, my father's house is a house of prayer and you've turned it into a den of thieves. And of course this upset some people and they were trying to do him harm. But it says that Jesus continued to preach and to teach in the temple, and the people were hanging on his every word. Again, the sweetness of Jesus, uh, they were able to, uh, you know, focus on that. And the, the bitterness, the sourness, the, the struggles um, didn't really matter. <laughs> they were hanging on his every word uh, you know, despite his his uh, being a little bit coarse with the people that were there, they they ignored that and focused on the sweetness of his teachings. So let us also do likewise and focus on the sweetness and the beauty of God's love for us and God's teachings to us. Let us pray our evening prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, lay your healing hand upon me, for I have sinned. Happy the man who considers the poor and the weak. The Lord will save him in the day of evil, will guard him, give him life, make him happy in the land. 
and will not give him up to the will of his foes. The Lord will help him on his bed of pain. He will bring him back from sickness to health. Ask me, as for me, I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. My foes are speaking evil against me. How long before he dies and his name be forgotten? They come to visit me and speak empty words. Their hearts are full of malice. They spread it abroad. My enemies whisper together against me as they weigh up the evil which is on me. He will not rise again from where he lies. Thus even my friend, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has turned against me. But you, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let me rise once more, and I will repay them. By this I shall know that you are my friend, if my foes do not shout in triumph over me. If you uphold me, I shall be unharmed, and set in your presence for evermore. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from age to age. Amen, amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, healer of soul and body, you said, Blessed are the merciful, they will obtain mercy. Teach us to come to the aid of the needy in the spirit of brotherly love that we in turn may be received and strengthened by you. Lord, lay your healing hand upon me, for I have sinned. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. God is for us a refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in time of distress, so we shall not fear, though the earth should rock. Though the mountains fall into the depths of the sea, even though its waters rage and foam, even though the mountains be shaken by its waves, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The waters of a river give joy to God's city, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within, it cannot be shaken. God will help it at the dawning of the day, Nations are in tumult, kingdoms are shaken. He lifts his voice, the earth shrinks away. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, consider the works of the Lord, the redoubtable deeds he has done on the earth. He puts an end to wars over all the earth. The bow he breaks, the spear he snaps. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God supreme among the nations, supreme on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All-powerful Father, the refuge and strength of your people, you protect in adversity and defend in prosperity those who put their trust in you. May they persevere in seeking your will and find their way to you through obedience. The mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. All nations will come and worship before you, O Lord. Mighty and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who would dare refuse you honor, or the glory do your name, O Lord? Since you alone are holy, all nations shall come and worship in your presence. Your mighty deeds are clearly seen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All nations will come and worship before you, O Lord. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The unmarried man is busy with the Lord's affairs, concerned with pleasing the Lord. The virgin, indeed any unmarried woman, is concerned with things of the Lord in pursuit of holiness in body and spirit. 
the virgins are led into the presence of the king amid, amid gladness and joy. The virgins are led into the presence of the king amid gladness and joy. They are brought into the king's dwelling place amid gladness and joy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The virgins are led into the presence of the king amid gladness and joy. Let the little children come to me, for they are at peace in my Father's kingdom. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the, chi let the little children come to me, for they are at peace in my Father's kingdom. Christ extolled those who practice virginity for the sake of the kingdom. Let us praise him joyfully and pray to him. Jesus, example of virgins, hear us. Christ, you presented the church to yourself as a chaste virgin to her spouse. Keep her holy and inviolate. Jesus, example of virgins, hear us. Christ, the holy virgins, went out to meet you with their lamps alight. Keep the fidelity of your poor, consecrated handmaids burning brightly. Jesus, example of virgins, hear us. Lord, your virgin church has always kept its faith whole and untarnished. Grant all Christians a whole and untarnished faith. Jesus, example of virgins, hear us. You have given your people joy in celebrating the feast of your holy virgin, Rose Philippine. Give us constant joy through her intercession. Jesus, example of virgins, hear us. You have admitted the holy virgins to your marriage banquet. In your mercy, lead the dead to your heavenly feast. Jesus, example of virgins, hear us. Gathering our prayer and praises into one, let us offer the prayer that Christ himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Gracious God, you filled the heart of Rose Philippine Duchesne with charity and missionary zeal and gave her the desire to make you known among all peoples. Fill us who honor her memory today with the same love and zeal to extend your kingdom to the ends of the earth. We ask this through our, the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night, everyone, and let's have a wonderful weekend, shall we? See you tomorrow.